Um, it's with great pleasure that we have Jorge Fernandez Vidal here this week, visiting from Spain. And before we introduce him further, I just want to give you a little bit of background about um, the first collector residency that the gallery is running. So lots of you would have heard of artist residencies, where an artist goes away for a period of time, which may be anything between two weeks and six weeks, or maybe as long as three months, and they have um, time and space to um, think and develop their practice, um, usually in an environment which is away from their normal environment. Um, so this is something that a lot of people in the art world are familiar with, but what not many people are doing thus far is something called a collector residency. But this is a concept that has started to be um, experimented with by a few galleries around the world. I think this might be the first time it's been called a collector residency in South Africa. And the idea is, um, how do we think about art collecting as, uh, as a practice and as something which is a, pra a practice that someone develops over the course of a lifetime or part of a lifetime, um, perhaps? What motivates um, art collectors? What might their responsibilities be as collectors? Uh, what are their um, influences, perhaps, perhaps, on uh, histories of art? And I think it's quite interesting time to ask that question, uh, given the rise in popularity of African contemporary art globally at the moment. So, um, people complain about the internet a lot, but um, in the case of Jorge and myself, I'm very happy to say that we actually met thanks to the internet. <laughs> Jorge couldn't make an art fair in Paris a few years ago. Um, but he'd noticed one of the artists that I was working with, and we started corresponding. And then actually, I think he went quiet for a few months, and a few months later, I thought, well, maybe I should just drop him a line again. And since then, we've never stopped emailing. And uh, I think we're both email addicts. Um, yeah. We like emailing late at night yeah. <laughs> as well. Um, yeah, I think we both have work on tendencies as well. So, yes, many emails have followed. And it's been a real pleasure to get to know Jorge a bit. Um, sort of virtually, but this is the first time we've actually got to spend a significant amount of time together, uh, which, which has been great. And the purpose of his week in Southern Africa is really to spend um, some intensive time getting to know the local art scene in Johannesburg, first of all, and then he's off to Havarone and Harare as well for a few days. So uh, Liesl will give a little bit of more background about Jorge's collecting interests, but over to Liesl now. Um, Liesl Barath is many things, um, but a local collector based here in Johannesburg. Um, she has a background in accounting and finance, but she is an avid art lover, and um, she is seen at pretty much every exhibition and fair that happens in the city. And um, she's done it quietly and very, I'd say, persistently over the number of the, the past number of years, and it's been wonderful to see um, her knowledge growing um, through time and actually learning from her as well. So thanks, Lisa, for being here, and Lisa's going to kind of lead the discussion with um, with Jorge. Um, her collection involve well includes quite a lot of works on paper um, as well as um, painting. Jorge's collection um, started primarily around photography, but is branching out into other mediums as well. So, without further ado, over to you, and thanks very much both of you for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Um, I was hoping I'd be able to introduce myself because I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> um, a couple of years ago, well, maybe two, two years ago, I was asked to be part of a panel at um, Turban Art Fair uh, for you know, discussing beginning a collection and young collectors, and I struggled with the term, and I still do. Um, but in preparation for asking a list of questions <laughs> today, um, it's been, it's been a, a worthwhile uh, pause to see what, you know, what is all of this about, what does the word collecting mean, and, and how much of a personal practice it is. Um, spawned out of addiction at some point, until you don't have the space, and um, but very much out of curiosity and a willingness to be, to confront ideas that are being presented to you, to explore them and to um, 
think expose yourself a little bit um, and then to, go, to, to continue a sort of a dialogue with those ideas and with new ones. Um, and the practice of collecting is quite a broad one. There is a point when it changes from accumulation to collecting, but I will leave um, that question <laughs> to Jorge to answer. Um, I'm not going to elaborate too much more on what uh, you do, because I think we'll go through that as we go through the questions. So um, without further ado, um, one of the things that I've seen asked quite often is how you define this term um, of collector, and what does it mean to you? Well, um, it's, it's a good question. I, I think that most uh, collectors don't necessarily like the term. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, at least I still kind of feel a bit like a fraud, and I always think that a, a collector is somebody really <coughs> serious and knowledgeable, but, but that's, that's the term that... that <laughs> That uh, people use to to refer to you when you when you have a substantial uh, accumulation of artworks, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm comfortable with the term um, to the extent that uh, it means something personal to me, right? And 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 uh, I can be a collector without necessarily being a certain type of uh, collector. So um, it's just. Um, a way of expressing a passion I have, and, and, and if that's the way the outside world describes mm -hmm. uh, that exercise, then I'm, I'm okay with that. But, uh, but it, it's, still, it's still a, a, a difficult uh, turn for me, I don't know. Okay. Um, in the bio that uh, Julia shared, and also on the um, intro into the, the online um, exhibition that um, she sent me, uh, there is a you know, broader view of your uh, focus on, on photography, uh, that you have approximately 350 works in your mm -hmm. collection. Um, what did it start with, if you remember? Uh, I know it said it started, it started with a curio at age 17, but since you've been collecting for a decade, what, what is the starting point? And how would you say your collection reflects the narrative or the journey of your life over the mm -hmm. decade? Well, I think, um, I'm, I'm not too sure I know how to answer that question, but I'll try. But, uh, I mean, it started with a, perhaps a sophisticated souvenir, right? I mean, I, 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 I traveled to Africa uh, when I was quite young, and um, I've always been close to, to the art world. My father is a frustrated uh, painter and a judge, um, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I've always been close to that world, and, and, and I came to Africa, and, and for me, buying a photography was a kind of a an interesting way of bringing something out of that experience back home um, and uh, and since you know I, I didn't like the Chinese made souvenirs I thought that uh, a photography was probably a better um, way of remembering certain emotions and and in subsequent trips I, I kind of made a habit of, of doing that and over time I started accumulating I mean, it, it, it's almost an insulting term to call it souvenir, but, but it is really what it was for me. Mm. Um, uh, if you ask me the specific, uh, about the specific work, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't remember. Uh, probably, I know if it's one of three, but, uh, but you know, I have a lousy memory and, and, and it has taken me quite a few years to actually start recording and documenting what I own and what I've acquired. So, so I don't know the specific uh, work, I know, I know the place I went to, but, uh, but you know, it was one of 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 um, several. When you talk about the the narrative, I think uh, you know, I it it has taken me a long time to understand that what I do goes beyond myself, um, and so um, and that I have a certain responsibility with my with my acquisitions. So at, at the beginning, I simply bought things I like. If you look at the probably fifty first artworks I bought, there were probably all of them black and white photography that was and it was out of I don't know it spoke to me it mm. just simply liked it and then there were a lot of things and then and then somebody smarter than me would probably identify a pattern but you know it, it would it would kind of be a a lie if I say oh you know this was the the thing I was building it was it was just probably raw emotion and and just me acquiring something I I liked um when especially galleries uh, started 
referring to me as a collector, I started thinking, hey, this is, uh, I gotta be a bit more serious about this. And, uh, and, and you know, I started putting some thought behind it and, and I try to be uh, more educated about it, learning more about, about, about what was behind uh, the practice mm -hmm. and what was behind the artists. I mean, I always like to research, learn, learn about them, learn about their, their stories, their personal histories, what they wanted to communicate, the context. I think that's one of the greatest things about uh, African art and particularly photography. There's always something behind that. It's not just a picture. So for me, it was a great way to learn about the content, about the politics, about the economics, about the social issues, about the things that were worrying artists that, that were in many respects things that also worried me back home. So there was kind of a, a, a connection uh, there. Um, and then you know, as I as I as I develop, I I, I actually uh, continued acquiring uh, photography for for many years until I decided that I could perhaps uh, buy a painting. And I'm not sure if the first one was from from uh, Guns and Rain. Probably it was because I was so afraid, right? I mean, I, I have uh, so much respect for people that know, and I felt that I knew absolutely nothing about uh, painting, and I had no taste. Uh, so, so it was Is kind of a huge... Is that an influence of your father and <laughs> I don't know. of the painter and critiquing? No, and... I, I, you know, I've always, uh, you know, I've, I've, uh, I, I work in the corporate world and I've always be believed in specialization. And so I have a lot of respect for people that know about things. And I'm very conscious of those things that I know nothing about. And, and, and painting was something I, I could enjoy visually, but acquiring... A, a painting for me was kind of a fairly difficult process and I cannot describe why but I just mm -hmm. felt you know how do I choose you know is this good is this something I'm going to like 10 years on the road I couldn't even and, and even today I don't have a language to express why I like certain things right so mm -hmm. so for me it kind of felt like a really difficult thing but then you know I, I it started um, I, uh, I got uh, and I actually think I remember the first painting I, I bought right now and, and I felt more comfortable and I started branching out into other things I'm buying uh, or I've been buying for the last couple of years, uh, paintings, some sculptures, some textile. So a few things that I think uh, are, are interesting. So And so shifting from, from photography, painting and sculpture, um, all of those are quite challenging to move around. Uh, what are some of the hurdles you faced in growing this collection? and? Yeah, Moving so items. Uh, I'm going to say now that uh, you're recording this, so, so I, I will be conscious of what I say, but you know, um, I wasn't married for a long uh, part of my collecting life, so, so kind of the, the issues I had were my own, so, so it was kind of a, you know, I had a space storage, so that wasn't an issue. Um, when I got married, and I'm happily married, just, just in case you're wondering, um, <laughs> all of these issues, all of these problems that come with, with, uh, with collecting began to, to surface. So, so, you know, there is, a, there is an issue of, uh, of storage. I mean, as, as you said, I have uh, about 350, probably more, probably 380 now, uh, but it's good that it stays that way. I, I, I keep repeating my wife that, that we only have 350 in all work. So, you know, you have to store them. Um, and my main hurdle, my main worry right now, my main concern is that I don't have enough space to hang it all, right? I mean, I'm, I'm a young professional that, that I cannot complain about my life, but I don't own a palace. So, so you know, uh, I struggle to, to kind of um, place everything I own. Mm -hmm. So for me, the, the biggest issue is, is, is having amazing art that um, is stored, right? So that's that's kind of the, the thing that pains me the most. Uh, but at the same time, that's not going to stop me from acquiring mm -hmm. other works. So, so it's something that we need to find yeah. a way to solve. So you mentioned earlier that um, when gallerists started call referring to you as a collector, you said you started to be or think that you needed to be more serious about it. So. Yeah. Um, what do you mean by being more serious about it? And do you have a strategy in your collection or do, is your strategy itself evolving as you travel around? Um, you know, I think it, I, what I mean by, by, by perhaps being more serious about it is that I, I actually had to think about the practice, right? Mm. Uh, 
I always thought that my collecting was just uh, a buying behavior, right? And I don't think about the rice I buy, I don't think about the milk I buy, right? I just buy it and that's it. Um, and I consume it. And it's the same with art, right? I, I just bought it and enjoyed it and that was kind of the whole um, exercise. And then I read about it, but then I, I, I realized that, you know, if I was going to um, start accumulating, chances were because of my age and because of my exposure that, you know, somehow, some way, I'll end up with thousands of artworks at some point. Um, so if I was comfortable with that, and that was the first question I had to answer myself, do I want to continue this path? And do I want to eventually uh, um, go broke in the process? Um, you know, I, if I want to continue that path, then, then it has to be better. I need to have a better grasp of what, what goes on. So now I invest more time in learning about what goes on. Before acquiring a work, I try to do more research. Um, I try to go to a lot of fairs and galleries. I try to see what goes on. I try to understand, you know, when people mention references, I try to go and look them up. Um, I go more to museums, so, so I kind of start um, behaving in a better way. That's kind of the, 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 the way to, to put it. And then you had a second question that I forgot, I think. Um, the strategy. Oh, uh, strategy. If you have one and... It's, it's um, ironic, but uh, I teach uh, strategy in university, so I, I should be good about strategy. Um, I don't think I have one. I think, I think uh, you know, the, the best advice I got is, is from, a, from a prominent collector back home is just focus, right? Focus on something um, and, uh, and uh, at, at least narrow down what you're going to do. So for me saying, you know, contemporary African art is kind of a way of narrowing that down, which mm. in, I mean, just coming to South Africa and meeting probably, what, 20 artists in, in two days uh, made me realize that maybe it's not narrow enough. But I, I guess my, my strategy is to have um, a relatively good representation of the diversity of this continent mm. um, and yeah. just and express through what I think it's relevant, which of mm. course I, I'm, I'm not going to kid myself, it's just only my personal perception. Mm. Um, so it's just kind of showing what uh, certain things mean to me through art, just, mm. just that. Um, if I were to introduce you, I'd definitely say you're pro-Africa and have yeah. a deep appreciation for the diversity of our various cultures because they don't think, to say African culture yeah, is of course, too yeah. narrowing. Yeah. Um, and also some of the work that I have seen that you collect in the list of artists you have is, is quite broad. Um, there are times so a few years ago, I bought a f my first or two works from an artist that, uh, or by an artist whose work re I really disliked two years before that because it was so confrontational and I didn't like the imagery that was being used and I found it exceptionally offensive, but the person who was making it, I didn't think that that should be what this person was making, but all of that also led me to, I suppose it was also a process of learning why I felt that way and um, eventually coming to like this very thing I did not like, but it was the idea, it was the imagery. Did, has, that, is the, has that been part of your experience and did it lead you to a different exploration? Of course, I think, I mean, um, one of the things, and I think this is, this applies to every field of knowledge, the more you learn, the, the more sophisticated uh, you become. Right, so I do admit that that some of the things I looked at ten years ago um, did mean nothing to me, and 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 those are things that today I really admire. I think the more you see, um, the better you understand, and and the more sophisticated you become. And even today, I, my wife works in the art world, and and her knowledge and her taste is is much better than mine, and and. And I do see that it takes me a couple of years to catch up with her in certain <laughs> respects, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that that uh, whole learning process is, is is something that allows me to, to change my taste. And of course, I'm pretty sure that what I'm going to buy a couple of years from now, it's probably going to be really different from what I am buying today. And, and, I'm, and I'm happy with that. I think that the taste mm -hmm. um, evolves. You mentioned something about, about artists. I, I, 
I always hesitate to meet the artist because I never know whether what I see in the person is what I see in the artwork or whether I like the person, whether that influences my perception of their work. Um, I, unless I am confident that I'm going to like the person because of the changes I've had, I uh, refuse to meet them or learn a lot about their personalities because I think it's dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> that that's well. That leads us to another question as to who you engage with in mm -hmm. the art world, which is quite broad. Um, who are your relationships with? Mm -hmm. uh, do you collaborate with other collectives? Um, do you engage only with galleries? And of course, um, online gives you uh, access to different to different regions and geographies yeah. so much more than you would have before. Yeah. I mean, I'm a millennial, so probably, I'm yeah. not going to lie to you, 95% of my engagement is online uh, mm -hmm. with people, with artists. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm curious and I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an email addict, as Julie said, mm -hmm. so, so I, I love to reach out to people. Look, I, I reach out to anyone that I think uh, is interesting, right? And, and, and in this world, some people are more open to share. Um, sometimes I, uh, you know, if I like a... a critique of a, of a curator, I reach out to them and, and that leads to an interesting or not conversation. Um, I reach out to artists, I like a lot of them through Instagram, through email. Um, I like to work with galleries, I'm not going to lie to you, in, in most cases they, they, they kind of make um, your life easier um, in, in all respects, so, so I do liaise with galleries quite often. It's also a good point of, of, of learning and um, and uh, understanding what goes on and and, and uh, I'm lucky to have the opportunity to be here today so so you know galleries are certain certainly a, a, a really uh, um, important way for me to engage with this world and then in general I'm, I, I talk to anyone who is willing to talk to me right so, so you know I, I I feel that I come to this world as as an ignorant person so all the conversations I have with people are an opportunity for me to to learn, and that's that's the way I approach it. Unfortunately, in 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 Europe, well, there is an increase in interest in African art, and that's fantastic for me. But uh, you know, sometimes I I'm I'm the guy who knows the most about African art in a table, so that that's a terrible um, place to be. So so I gotta come here to to learn from those I know, or go to specific fairs and places to, to kind of get that uh, that deeper mm -hmm. deeper understanding. And do you, so it's been coming for a, a few years now, um, and the focus on African contemporary and it being a feature at art fairs in New York or London, um, and if, if fairs focus specifically mm -hmm. on that, um, how do you sort out the hype from the quality? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Well, first of all, I was actually quite happy when, when these fairs came up, because okay, I mean, it made my life easier. Um, I, um, look, I, I actually, whenever an artist becomes very, uh, successful, I am lucky enough, uh, that I'm not able to afford him in many instances. So, so it's a really good way of, of, of dealing with that, right? Whenever they, they get into the, the, uh, you know, let's say thousands and thousands and thousands of uh, dollars, then that's great. I don't need to worry about them because um, I will never <laughs> collect them. But, but there is a lot of hype about, about art. I try to buy things I like. Look, I know, uh, I know probably 95% of what I own is gonna be worthless uh, from a financial point of view. Uh, you know, I'm gonna say 20 years on the road, probably 10. Mm -hmm. um, so, and, and I'm not one of those collectors that thinks, oh, you know, I have this uh, amazing eye and I'm going to spot those artists that are going to be here uh, you know, 20 years down the road. So for me, if it's something I like, I, I don't care if, uh, if they are um, popular or not. I'm always careful when I see that happening. I'm, I'm concerned because you know, I, I, I usually tend to acquire a lot of works from the same artist. So if I see that, that somebody comes in and, and sells very quickly, and of course if you've been in this world for a while, you, you see certain galleries that tend to do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, an artist goes up in, in price rather quickly and then two years on the road you ask about them and they're like, oh, you know, I don't know that guy, right? So, so you, you also got to identify those, those 
artists and galleries that you feel have a track record mm -hmm. and have done things slowly. When I see somebody somebody doing something rather quickly, I know that that in most instances is not going to last. Mm -hmm. So so that that's something that that worries me. But uh, you know, I've also acquired artists that were kind of mainstream and really popular uh, back then because I simply love the artwork and, and, mm. and that's okay with me. So if you're not um, one of those trying to hunt for value and um, saying that in seven years you need to see your return um, and you've got a, you, you collect in depth in, for particular artists, do you, does your collection extend to beyond the work that you put on your wall or display, for example, um, the tools that an artist might have used or um, first versions of the print or tests or did, have you explored adding that? Actually, I, I, in, in some cases when I have the, I mean, that's, that's a really personal thing and that belongs to the artist, right? Mm -hmm. So I never even dream of owning any of that. But uh, whenever I have a chance, I, I, I acquired an artwork uh, a while ago and, and uh, the artist was really kind to, to give me some of the earlier concepts uh, or tests and things and, and for me that was great but I, I mean for me it would be uh, pretentious to just ask for that stuff. I think that's, that's part of the personal journey of the, of the uh, artists and uh, if they share that with me that, that adds a lot. I'm really curious so I like to learn about the process, I like to, but, but it's more about the discussions than it is about owning, owning stuff, mm. right? Um, so, in your few days in SA so far, um, how would you compare the production, the artist production in SA uh, to other places you've visited? Um, and have you had some of the experiences as you're going, you've had this week and you're going to have in the next uh, five or six days, I think mm -hmm. it is, elsewhere? I mean, I think this... Um I, I was telling Julie, I've never had an experience like this one, right? Especially when you come as a, as a foreigner, and especially if your label is a collector, um, you have the conversations that people want to have with you, mm. right? So you go to galleries, they tell you whatever they want to tell you. Um, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. You go to a museum and, and you got to see things yourself. Uh, today we were lucky to visit a couple of uh, fantastic museums with the curators and you get, I get, to see things that I've never seen in my life, like a storage room of a museum, mm. which for me was fantastic. So I get to do things that I wouldn't have an opportunity to do mm. in other circumstances. I got to see a lot of artist studios, which was uh, a, an amazing experience. Yesterday we had a, an incredible dinner with a diverse set of people. So for me, this experience has been um, transformational in many respects, because I never mm. have a chance to, to do these things, right? I mean, especially as a tourist, you, you come here and you're lost and you kind of go to the places that you find online. Uh, if you're lucky, you meet up with a few artists and, and you have a, um, certain conversations. But, uh, but this has been different because, because it was a structured uh, program and, and it was an opportunity to see things in a different way. Um, what strikes me about this market and about South Africa in particular is that... It's, how do I say this as an outsider? Uh, and I'm very direct and I need to be careful with my words, but um, South Africa is such a complex, such a politically diverse, ethnically diverse, uh, economically uh, complicated uh, country that you see that reflection in the art that is being produced. I think in general, you know, you go, you go and see a Spanish artist and, and, and you talk about concepts like life and death and nature and beauty uh, and flowers and, uh, and a missing father, you know, that kind of things which, it, it, it's fantastic. Or you don't have a conversation, you simply admire something that it's beautiful and that's it. Here, every single conversation you have is about politics, is about race, is about history, it's about um, social inequality, it's about uh, economic uh, difficulties, so, so it's all quite rich and as an outsider that doesn't understand what goes on, although I try to read as much as I can, it's actually a fascinating thing. I mean, the complexity of, of this country is reflected in the art 
And so every single piece of artwork you see, it's a learning opportunity. So, so you kind of look at that and, and, and you're not staring at a piece of art, you're, you're staring at a, at a book, right? Mm -hmm. At a learning opportunity. So, so that's, that's kind of unique here. Even African countries, I think, I think South Africa in that respect is, is a really uh, mature uh, market. And, and, it's, and it's fascinating as an outsider, um, it's, a, it's a fascinating experience. Mm -hmm. I think in, across the, the countries on our continent, there'll be um, different social, economic, political um, uh, histories and struggles that each, uh, I suppose, yeah, each community will, will express differently, um, which if you are a collector of that work will probably lead you to um, a sense of certain responsibility to hold on to or to, ex to show Mm -hmm. um, the stories that you have collected because each work does tell you something. Mm -hmm. So what do you see then as your responsibility as mm -hmm. a collector of work from the continent mm -hmm. and the various um, what's the word I'm looking for? celebrations as well because yeah. we capture the fantastical and um, the good as well as uh, the painful. Mm -hmm. I think for me one of the, I mean, I think probably all my friends hate me for this, but uh, you know, the perception that people have uh, in, in, in the Western world about Africa is so basic and wrong that, you know, I think that uh, through art, you're able to somehow show the diversity of this uh, continent, remind people that there are actually 54 countries in Africa, and it's not one country, um, show a different uh, perspective of, of, of the world in general, right? Uh, the diversity, the talent uh, that, that uh, Africa has, um, the different narratives, the different concerns. In, in many respects, certain artworks is a way of reminding me and us as, as, as Westerns, if you want, that we're not that different, that, that mm -hmm. the things that, that concern certain artists are the same thing that, that concern our own artists or, or us as, as individuals. And I think it's a great way of celebrating um, the magic that happens here, right? Um, and so for me, I, I feel I have that responsibility of, of showing it. I mean, showing it to, to my immediate uh, circle, um, educate my family, educate my friends, um, educate do people do at that? home. Well, I mean, when when it happens all the time that people come home and they 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 are surprised by an artwork, and uh, you know, I kind of uh, discuss not in a in a technical way. I mean, I, I I don't even own the words to do that, but what it means to me, and 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 we have a discussion about the context, and and uh, and especially with photography, I think people find find it easier to relate to, especially people that know absolutely nothing about art, it's just easier to, to engage with a photographer than it is with other more complex artworks. And you just have a discussion about what they want to do and, and it's a great introduction um, to, to a conversation about Africa and I have the impression that, that you know, they at least leave my place with, um, with, um, with um, more informed perspective. And at the same time, one of the things I've been doing recently, it's, uh, it's uh, I, I lend my works or I organize exhibitions of, of, of works in my collection. And that's a fantastic way of also um, showing people a different um, world. I mean, they, I, mean I think the, the reactions, whether people like it uh, or not, they always say, well, I was not expecting this. I mean, I was not expecting this quality or this uh, profoundness or this, um, um, incredible work coming out of Africa where, you know, people die of a salvation, you know, like, what, you know, so it's, um, it's a great way of, of getting a, 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 a more realistic perception of, of, of the world, you know. So I know Julie wants this to be interactive with the audience as well. Um, I was going to ask you about advice for collectors, but perhaps we should just jump in and get questions from the floor. And um, perhaps if anyone wants that question asked, mm -hmm. they can do so. Yes. What was your entry to, to Africa? Where, did, where was your first acquisition from? 
my first acquisition was from Ghana. Yeah. Um, I, I, actually, my first trip to Africa, excluding Morocco, uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. My, my family partially comes from Morocco, so I've been there many times before, but I was to, the, to Senegal and to Gambia, but my first acquisition was in, in Ghana. Yeah. So, and I actually, most of my initial uh, works were uh, bought in West Africa. For how long? For how long until I went to a different region? Yeah. Probably three to four years. Yeah. Yeah. And then? And then, <laughs> and then I probably bought um, work from a Mozambican artist. So jumped to Mozambique um, and then started branching out to, to other things and I got out of control. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> you say that you're principally a collector, but you mentioned briefly just now that you do exhibit as well. Do you see yourself having a responsibility to exhibit, to inform and educate other people that don't come to your home? Yeah, I mean, I think it's... Um, I have tremendous respect for museums and institutions, and, uh, and I guess my end goal is to gift the collection to, a, to an institution or, you know, if, if it's good enough, probably it's never going to be good enough so that an institution will want it. But if it is that good that somebody uh, wants it and wants to show it, for me that would be fantastic because that's the end goal of, of, of what I do. I mean, I, I, I'm not so selfish so as to feel that I'm the only one who has to enjoy that. And I think, you know, um, it is, my collection is so rich that um, it offers so many educational opportunities that, that you know, I think it would be a really fun way of, uh, of, of learning and interacting with, uh, with um, a, a different uh, set of experiences, I guess, I don't know. Yeah? yeah? Um, you started out collecting photography and um, you spoke in your conversation earlier about being aware of not pressuring artists about uh, test prints or original works. Or, uh, but obviously with photography, when you're collecting it, editioning is an issue. Yeah. How do you address that in your own collection? Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you, it's, a, it's an exercise of trust. Uh, throughout my collecting uh, years, I've had a lot of issues with editioning. Mm -hmm. A lot. Um, and they were not one or two or three, there were a lot of issues. Um, it, it kind of pisses me off that perhaps certain artists and galleries uh, do not keep a strict track record. I know that with photography, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a risk, right? But uh, I decided early in my life to be trustworthy uh, about the world. So. I am happier if I just trust, and if uh, I make a mistake, then, then I just simply move on. I actually think that serious artists understand the importance of um, uh, accurate um, edition tracking, and I think it's getting better. I think it's a, it's a, look, I also think a lot of the great artists that you have here have never had access to education. Um, access to this market to really understand the importance of certain things and I also think that that's they're learning about that process right I decided also to focus on emerging artists and, and normally you're dealing with 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 people who are super talented but they're in their 20s and they just don't know much about the world hopefully they'll learn from their mistakes and they move on but uh, but but it is an issue I try to I try to control that but uh, I'm, I'm not kidding myself it's 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 a complicated thing. That's not going to stop me from acquiring photography. Uh, so, you know, the, there will be a, a few issues here that are slipping, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I try to also trust my in instincts. So, so sometimes when you're working with a gallery or you're working directly with an artist, you, you got a feeling whether you have a, a, an honest person behind that, even like count in many respects. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it's it's a it's a main worry, and it's a main worry for a lot of collectors that would like to um, acquire African photography. They just they just simply don't trust that the system is going to work. Yeah.
And um, how do you deal with, as, an, as a collector, um, just falling in love with a piece versus the inherent or intrinsic economic value and merit that you yeah. um, I, I might be one of the only collectors in the world that knows for a fact that I'm going to lose money. Um, um, I, I am a really analytical person in my day-to-day -day job, so I do not kick myself. This is not an investment. Um, if you approach it as an investment, maybe you're going to make money. I mean, uh, but there's no way you're going to be able to pay, right? There is this uh, interesting book that talks about the financial market that, uh, well, um, it's written by a professor, I think, from the University of Chicago, Michael Burton, I think is his name. And it's called The Random Walk Through, Down, through uh, Wall Street. And he did this research and he explained his research with a really simple analogy. Um, talking about stock picking abilities, right? The ability to pick a stock that is going to go up in price. And he said, you know, a monkey throwing darts has a better stock picking ability than your average financial analyst. I mean, that, that was kind of the, the outcome of the research. And I think with collectors, it's the same thing. I mean, you can identify patterns, probably you can identify talent, but you see a lot of outstanding artists that, you know, maybe they have a family issue and they have to start working and they stop being full-time artists and they had this, you know, amazing uh, career ahead of them and, and all of a sudden they stop producing and therefore they become irrelevant. I know for a fact, because of the, the kind of work I acquire, which is mostly emerging uh, contemporary uh, art, that uh, I'm, I'm not going to make money out of that. I try to buy artworks that I afford, that's the first thing, so I never get into debt, which is good. Uh, so I don't see it as an investment. I will get into debt if I see a good investment opportunity, um, but not in the art world. Um, I just buy things that I like and, and if they go up in price, that's fantastic, and if they don't, that's fantastic as well. Um, and, and you know, I think there's, a, there's something to be careful of in trying to guess mm -hmm. this value thing. Um, because you mentioned something, you said the artist becomes irrelevant, but irrelevant to what? To the market, make, right? Exactly, and it's a market, so yeah. we are, this, this conversation has an opportunity to, um, if there were people who are thinking about buying art, to kickstart that, right? A lot of what we're doing is market making, right? We're, I'm in finance as well, right? Part of banking is to make that trading market happen. So, um, and, and similarly, there are, there are uh, parts of the art world who play that function, it's, it's, it's part of that. So, irrelevant to the market, but not irrelevant to you as the person mm -hmm. who owns that piece of work yeah. that's sitting on your wall that you love. Mm -hmm. That can't change. Yeah. So I think that's a yeah. critical thing to keep hold of. But you know, a lot of people, this is fair to say, a lot of people have made a lot of money in this market. I just don't know whether they knew that in advance. So, um, you know, I actually doubt they did, but you know, but you can, yeah. And I've been, I'm not gonna lie to you, I've bought works from artists that I'm pretty sure have uh, appreciated a lot over the years, but uh, that doesn't compensate for the ones that didn't. So. <laughs> Yeah. A question: Have you commissioned any art, and what are your feelings on collectors commissioning art from artists? Um, I I have been thinking about commissioning mm -hmm. art uh, for a long time, for a personal project. Um, not a personal project, just a topic that worries me, um, and I've always kind of felt, you know, I would love to have a smart artists perception about this topic so 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 that kind of collaboration is something i've thought about i finance a lot of projects um artists have approached me with uh with projects they wanted to do uh, and they didn't have the resources they involved in most cases some traveling or, or some expenses and if i thought the project was interesting i was i would uh, i would uh, be uh, interested in 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 funding that but um I think the beauty of art is, 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 is the outcome of it, mm -hmm. and I feel that if I somehow influence that, uh, yeah. the, the outcome is going to be terrible, because I have zero creativity, right? Mm -hmm. So I might have a, a broad topic that worries me, mm -hmm. 
um, and I would love to, to kind of see uh, uh, how an artist would explore that topic, but uh, other than that, uh, no. What I think about the, the collector's commission work, I actually think that people should do whatever the hell they want with their lives, mm -hmm. as a general concept. So if it works for them and it works for the artists, I mean, who am I to judge that? So I, I don't actually have an opinion. I know what I would do, but uh, I mean, I guess if people do it, there must be a reason for that. Just, yeah. Thank you. No worries, yeah. But isn't there another way of looking at commissioning to say to an artist, make me something that you think I would like? No. Which would be the, the artist's perception of you? It could be, um, I mean, I'm pretty sure if I asked that question, uh, at least the artists that know what I like, they would identify works, uh, or they would actually produce something I like. But um, if they, I mean, I, I would never see myself approaching an artist and saying, I, I mean, I actually, it's the first time, now that you say that, it's the first time, but I don't picture myself as an individual expressing that. Um, Musicians used to do that a lot. Well, yeah. I've always done that with musicians. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I've never had that, uh, that, that interest, right? What I know for sure is that I'm probably going to like a lot of what an artist produced. So if I have your work in my collection, chances are that without me telling you that, you're going to produce something I'm going to like. So, you know, probably I save a lot of time just not saying that and just waiting for what happens, right? But, uh, yeah. There's one more question there, right? Yeah. Sorry. So, um, in France, I ran a small gallery. Uh, and my mate, and it was in Isle, which is a very sort of intellectual snobbery kind of place. And what, the reason I wanted to do it was to break those barriers so yeah. that people actually got an opening, people who didn't get seen. Um, do you see your role as that as well, like opening the window on, on art that hasn't been seen or should be seen? Or? I mean, I, I, I actually don't, don't, don't see myself as having a a role at all, right? So, so I mean, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm somebody who, who collects and if I have a chance, I show what I have out of appreciation for the work I, I, I acquired. Um, I, I, I made this interesting comment today at uh, Wits Art Museum because it was the first time that actually so a curatorial statement that I understood. Um, and I was taken aback and I thought it was fascinating. Um, I thought it was one of the best things I've seen in a long time. Um, you know, I hate this notion of art being uh, that thing that is reserved for those that actually have a certain knowledge and intelligence and understanding. And I consider myself as a, you know, a, relatively intelligent individual, uh, probably uh, fairly average, but you know, I'm not an idiot. So I always have the impression that if I don't understand something, um, I either don't know enough or they don't want me to know what's been written. So I just like the whole notion of making art accessible to, to, to everyone. And when we say everyone, I'm not saying the underprivileged, I'm saying you know people that maybe uh, are uh, great professionals but know absolutely nothing about this world. So for me, every single um, exercise, every single initiative, every single uh, exhibition that tries to simplify things for the public, that, that tries to express things in a, in, a, in a simple, common language that every human being understands, it's something that I, that I love. What I can tell you is in those exhibitions where I've participated, um, or where I have uh, lent my work, I've made a strong point of ensuring that whatever is written on the wall is easily understood, and uh, and that is a constant fight to to the point that uh, that I, I haven't always managed to succeed. Right, but but I think the whole notion of of, of making art uh, accessible and making art understood is 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 a uh, is a worthy fight. Yeah. And, but I think that's what you're doing. That's what's so interesting. You are opening the window to everything. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trying. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a drop in an, in an ocean, right? So I'm trying to do that. I, I, I just, you know, I'm a simple guy with a simple language, um, probably uh, a fairly basic understanding of many things, and, and, and I express what I feel, what I see, what I own in, in those very same simple terms, um, and, uh, and I find that in that way is. Is, is approachable. I, I definitely, whenever I talk about my collection, whenever I talk about artists I like, I, I, 
you know, I, I, I use simple words, I, 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 I express my emotion in really simple terms. As I said, I'm an analytical person, I'm not somebody that has a good command of, of, uh, of language okay. in general. Certainly English is not my mother tongue, so, so when I have to express um, um, uh, artistic terms in English, I always go for, for simple sentences and, and, and I, that also reflects what I, what I feel about this and what I think you know, should be uh, the way that, uh, that people that know nothing about this world get to get to see the, the, the art that is being produced or shown. Yeah? Oh, thank you. Okay. Have you ever sold any work in the collection? When you think about refining the collection as your art develops over the years, um, you know, when you, when you get rid of things that no longer have meaning for you as the years progress, or is it literally yeah. the same tech? I've never done it. Um, I don't have an interest to do it. If I have to because I have to feed my family, I will do it. If not, no. It's, it's not something that interests me. Uh, I've had offers, uh, in some cases, uh, you know, substantial ones for certain artworks. And I don't have a, a, an interest. I actually don't have the need either, right? So if you don't have the need, then, then why, would you, why would you do it? I actually think that, I mean, I've made mistakes and there are certain works I own that I would never buy again. Um, but uh, would I sell them? No. It's, it's also part of the journey, right? So, so it kind of tells a story and, 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 and it's a good reminder of um, how little I know at times, right? So it's, so it's, it's even good to see, it's even good to see that. Um, I'll do it if I have the need, if not, I, I, I don't think so, I'm, I'm, I'm not actively um, doing that. I also think it wouldn't, this is my personal opinion, of course, but it wouldn't be really fair with artists. I don't know, I, I, I have certain personal views that maybe will change with time, but I try not to profit from that. We've got one more question. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, thank you very much for beautiful insight. Uh, just a comment from my side. I've reached a stage where I believe the more I learn, the less I know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I think that's probably what happened to someone like Marshall Duchamp while he stopped painting. Mm -hmm. But uh, he uh, has done everything and in the sphere that he worked. What else could one have done? And uh, that was quite insightful mm -hmm. uh, from him. Mm -hmm. But yes, that's just the opinion. Mm -hmm. And I just want to make one uh, comment uh, about the value of art. And you, you actually covered it. But uh, something that many people don't bring together with the financial value is that the creative value, once the artist signed off his painting, the aesthetic value is fixed. It's either a good work, a poor work, or a mediocre work. Whereas in the financial world, the, that value fluctuates. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is governed by many things. It can be fashionability, it can be that an artist just uh, have forgotten and they lost value. But as a collector, that aesthetic value is why one should collect. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that is the most important uh, yeah. aspect of collecting. I agree. I'm hearing you saying something different. I think what he's saying is that you collect in because art teaches and you can learn from it. And I think that's one of your strategic falters. Mm -hmm. Could be. I mean, I think it's. Look, you've made, a, you've made a few interesting points. I mean, obviously, the aesthetic value, I think it changes over time. I mean, I think that, you know, as, as people try to, especially historians, art historians, as they, as they get to understand, they probably, artists that were overlooked, kind of realize years later that, that they were actually doing something that was quite 
exceptional. So I think that changes over time. I think that there is that that financial fluctuation that for me is kind of irrelevant. Of course, I'm I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to buy something that that is gonna be worth less tomorrow immediately, and I feel like an idiot. I, I hate doing that, but I am okay with the whole notion of knowing that things will or its value with um, road over time. For me, every time I acquire something, it's a learning opportunity. It's a it's a it's an acquisition that helps me uh, or builds upon a certain um, knowledge. And in other cases, I buy something I don't understand simply because I want to understand it. And I think it's it's great. I think it's beautiful. And I can say that I haven't yet understood a lot of the things I've bought recently. But uh, you know, it's kind of a process of, of building something that is part of my intangible capital. And it's kind of a, an excuse to, to do that, if I'm making any sense. Yeah. Well, I think I'm going to step in there. We're running a little bit out of time. But yes. Um, I know I'm not the most unbiased person in this instance, but I have to say this is one of the best talks I've been to in a long time. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, um, you haven't been to many. <laughs> you were fantastic. Thank mm, you for your thank questions. You. And you guys were both really awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Um, thank you, Julie. And we'll okay. continue the conversations for whoever wants to hang around for a glass of wine. Yeah. But thanks so much for being here. This has been a really wonderful evening. Mm, thank you. Thank thanks you. to you both. Thank you.